What's up? I'm Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, and fitness enthusiast. I help clients with bloating, gas, and other digestive issues so they can look and feel their best. This video today is going to be only about food, specifically what to eat and not to eat while you're going through a SIBO treatment. Just to maintain the scope of this particular video, I'm going to keep it strictly to food. SIBO, or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, is a condition in which there are too many bacteria in the small intestines. This can result in a variety of symptoms such as bloating, gas, abdominal pain, and constipation, diarrhea, nausea, as well as non-digestive symptoms as well, such as brain fog, chronic fatigue, weight loss, gain. I made a short video last year titled, Which SIBO Diet is Best? If you haven't watched this video already, you can click here to see it. This video is gonna add on to this previous video and provide you with some more detailed information. To answer a question you may have right up front, to the best of my knowledge, there is only one diet that exists that actually can treat and get rid of SIBO. This diet is called the elemental diet. To put it very simply, it involves drinking a powder for two weeks. What this is meant to do is the powder is very easy for your small intestine to absorb. So it essentially gets absorbed all in the first few feet of your small intestines. If you know a little bit about the human anatomy, the small intestine is very long. Depending on where you look, uh, it could be 20 to 30 feet long. So you're basically only using about an eighth of the small intestines, give or take, and you're resting the rest of the small intestines and letting it heal from the SIBO and also starving it of sugar, which a lot of the bacteria and other microorganisms need in order to thrive and continue being SIBO. So the elemental diet can work as a treatment. However, it is expensive, tastes bad, and you cannot eat any other food while going through the elemental diet as well. So there's definitely some drawbacks. Now for the diets that you probably actually you do care about ones that consist of actual real food stuff that I'm interested in you're interested in there are a lot of different diets that are used and people claiming that can be helpful for SIBO some of them include the low FODMAP diet low fermentation diet carnivore diet there's a lot of diets that people attempt to do for SIBO in order to get rid of it a lot of other practitioners have invented their own diets as well if they treat patients for SIBO and may have given their own particular diet its own specific specific name. The key thing to know is besides the elemental diet, to the very, very best of my knowledge, there is not another diet that actually gets rid of the SIBO. All these diets are doing is managing the symptoms, which is great, which is lowering the symptoms, but they're not actually going to be getting rid of the actual problem that's currently at hand. This is important to note because many people will go on one of these diets, such as maybe a carnivore diet, and as they're on the diet, they will feel better. Their symptoms will be reduced but from what I've seen, they're never going to be 100% better where they're feeling like, okay, the problem is actually resolved. And some days, even though they adhere to the diet perfectly well, like they have been all the rest of the days, some days their symptoms are going to be way worse. And this is really confusing. So in these cases, the diet technically is doing what it's meant to do, which is reduce the symptoms. However, sometimes people have expectations that are far too high for what the diet actually is capable of doing. In terms of using diets for SIBO, there's many different people that have many different opinions. The information that I'm going to talk about throughout the rest of this video is what has helped me personally the most, what I have used to help the most people, and what I've read and heard from other practitioners that help clients with SIBO to be helpful for their clients. I'm a huge fan of starting out with using the low FODMAP diet as the initial diet for a SIBO or IMO, intestinal methanogen overgrowth. You can definitely Google this, but low FODMAP stands for, I'm going to read this, fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, saccharides and polyols, which basically are some different types of sugars that the small intestines may not absorb and digest well. And this can cause you to have digestive issues, especially the ones that you may notice you have when you have SIBO. It can get a little tricky still because if you Google low FODMAP diet and click photos, you get a ton of different results. And if you click around online and look at each of these, there's no two low FODMAP diets that are listed that are exactly the same. This is annoying because when you have digestive symptoms, you're constantly second guessing every decision that you make. And on days where symptoms are bad, you're racking your brain trying to figure out what did I eat earlier today or what did I eat yesterday that may have been causing this. Or at least this is what I did for the eight years that I had SIBO. I can remember thinking things like, oh yeah, I did have that sauce at that restaurant yesterday and I don't know maybe what 
ingredients were in it. All right, now for my specific approach of how I like to do low FODMAP diet with a few little tweaks and additions. One rule that I live by with food is that all foods that I'm eating have to have one single ingredient in the food. I'm very strict with this. I learned this from a book called Fat Funeral by author Daniel DeLumo. Basically, if a food comes in a box, comes in a wrapper, it has labels that explain all over the packaging how healthy that food is for you, how it has as much protein in it as a whole egg, how it has 25% of your daily value of fiber. If it has anything like this, it's probably a processed food that you should avoid. There are exceptions, obviously, but you need to look at the ingredient labels. Ideally, hopefully there's not an actual need for an ingredient label, but if there is more than one extra ingredient in the food, maybe it, with the exception of salt, probably should be avoided. Rarely a prepackaged food will have multiple ingredients in them that are all whole foods and it is perfectly fine to eat. I have seen a few examples of this, but it is very uncommon. Basically in summary, eating one ingredient foods is one of the best possible things you can do for your long-term health and preventing chronic diseases. Okay, onto the food groups now. So keeping in mind what I just talked about, meat, poultry, fish, eggs, those are all perfectly fine to eat in whatever quantity you want for the low FODMAP diet. In terms of fruits and vegetables, many are considered to be fine to eat, but also many of them are considered to be not okay to eat. In terms of resources that I found online, I personally like the standard low FODMAP diet foods list that Dr. Ruscio puts out. Out of all the ones out there that I've looked at, this is probably the one that ties back to what I feel is best as well. Feel free to check this list out for vegetables, fruits, and some of the other food groups. For other kind of heavier carbohydrate options, oats, potatoes, and rice are all generally okay. Obviously, depending on where you look, you'll see different things such as white rice is okay, brown rice is not okay. Yes, there is some more fiber in brown rice, so it may be a better option to eat white rice if you are somebody that eats one of these types of foods regularly. Beans and legumes probably should be avoided based on most recommendations that I've seen and that I do. In general, most seasonings are okay. Ones to definitely avoid are onion and garlic. These are very highly fermentable and can cause you a lot of extra symptoms if you eat them while you have SIBO. Be extra careful if you use a lot of seasonings that have a lot of different ingredients in them, maybe such as a Creole seasoning or different types of curries. And talking about nuts, this is a controversial topic. There is a lot of info saying to avoid that, but there are a lot of other low FODMAP diets that say having a limited amount of nuts every day is acceptable. If you do choose to eat them, I'd probably limit it to no more than one ounce or about 28 grams per day. In terms of sweeteners, sugars, and alcohol, I always tend to prefer avoiding all of these during SIBO treatment. They can all feed the bad bacteria, which is probably disproportionately high compared to the good bacteria, and they also tend to cause more gut inflammation, which is not gonna be helpful as you're going through treatment and trying to heal your gut to eliminate symptoms. So I realize I am pretty strict with my diet suggestions and recommendations. However, my goal is to get you looking and feeling your best as fast as possible, not trying to figure out loopholes to let you feel guilt-free while still eating snacks and desserts every day. The exception to sugars and things like this, if you have diabetes and need to use glucose products such as the tablets or liquid to manage blood sugar, if this is the case, by all means, please go ahead and use these as intended by your doctor. For oils and cooking oils, these are fats specifically and they do not contain FODMAPs. For low or zero heat cooking, I prefer extra virgin olive oil. And for higher heat cooking, I prefer avocado oil or coconut oil. The reason is based on the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio of fatty acids which basically determines how inflammatory or anti-inflammatory they are. These three oils all have favorable ratios. Dairy is a pretty complicated category of foods. In theory, certain types of hard cheeses, lactose-free milks, oat milk, and some others are okay. But again, need to be careful with the ingredients. You may see in oat milk, which is okay, but then it has a bunch of added sugars and maybe a thickening agent to make it taste and feel a certain way when you're drinking it. And these extra ingredients are not okay, at least from my perspective. Having a sensitivity to dairy is also incredibly common and food sensitivities actually involve the protein in food which is different than the lactulose or the fermentable sugars in foods. If you do have a sensitivity it can be causing a low grade level of inflammation in your gut and body and this can be causing symptoms for a long period of time which are very difficult to identify because the sensitivity is different than an allergy which is a fast reaction you think when your face kind of swells up 
having an actual true allergy to a food. This is different than that. For these reasons with dairy, just because there's so many different types and so many different products, I find it easier while you are doing the treatment just to avoid dairy altogether throughout this period. I really prefer to avoid gluten completely throughout the treatment. And honestly, if you feel good cutting gluten out, it's not something that would be bad to eliminate permanently. Bread, pasta, cookies, beer, cereal, crackers. I can't really go through all the foods because gluten's in a lot of foods that unfortunately are a lot of foods that people really, really enjoy. If you're wondering if a gluten-free bread or other gluten-free products are okay, probably really hard to find something that only has one ingredient in it without the addition of all these other fillers, additive chemicals. So for that reason, I would say while you're doing the SIBO treatment just cut all these things out don't eat them this may seem ultra strict but if you want results that you've never had before sometimes you have to do things that you've never done before to summarize i really like the low fodmap diet for SIBO i take it a step further and avoid gluten dairy sugar and alcohol i find that this helps speed up the healing and recovery of the lining of the small intestines which does get temporarily damaged when you have SIBO and most importantly go with one ingredient foods both now during the SIBO treatment and a really good idea to do it long term. It's a game changer with preventing chronic disease and managing your weight. That is all I have for you today. If you have enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. I post a new full length video every Monday at 6 p.m. Central Time and YouTube shorts most days throughout the week. Thank you very much and I'll see you next week.